All right. Yeah, wanted to basically give a deep dive into gateways. Now, kind of the purpose of this is, is not to get into the technicals of gateways so much as just talking about why gateways. Gateways kind of are a novel feature to the Pocket Protocol, and uh, there's a lot of excitement around gateways and a lot of conversations around gateways, but uh, there hasn't really been good material that kind of defines why a gateway strategy is important uh, and kind of why it's unique and uh, why is it that it's a huge focus of what both Pocket Strategy now is adding more gateways and why it's a, a big focus uh, for Shannon. So yeah, going to the slide, uh, I wanted to give a quick history of gateways. So basically Pocket in the original vision was developers could access decentralized RPC uh, with an SDK. You know, Pocket was technically founded in, in around uh, what, like 2017, 2018, and then uh, we joined uh, at the end of 2018. Uh, and at the time, while all this was going on, uh, you know, Ethereum SDKs were were kind of a thing. Uh, They're starting to pop up, making it easy for people to interface directly with the Ethereum blockchain and uh, a call level. So you wouldn't have to call all, all your data in a, uh, uh, with the raw blockchain. You could actually just go through an SDK. It made data easy to get to you. But the challenge was for your SDKs to work, you had to have uh, an endpoint. You had to have a node. You had to have something to actually pull the data. So that's where Infura uh, was really the, the big guy at the time. And kind of the vision was, hey, what we could do is because there's all these Ethereum SDKs, we could actually have an SDK that makes it possible to just interface directly with Ethereum, take out the middleman. Uh, so that was kind of like the original vision of Pocket and very much still plays into uh, a lot of cool things that Shannon is going to unlock. Uh, but when Mainnet was launched, Pocket did not have enough SDK tooling to provide a seamless experience. So that's why the gateway was established as a short-term solution. Uh, when it was kind of first launched, it wasn't seen as like the, to be the, the center of pocket. It was just meant to allow people to start interfacing with the program uh, or with the protocol through an endpoint because they already have an uh, Ethereum SDK integrated into their system. And the pocket SDK was very minimal and there wasn't a lot you could do with it. So, hey, you can keep using your Ethereum SDKs that you're already using, but you can access a, uh, through the Pocket Portal. And that was kind of the vision, that was kind of the branding, and, the, uh, and as the portal started to grow in usage, and we started to see the value of it, that's what led to today with Gateways now kind of being a central strategy. And I'll kind of go into what Gateways provide that you can't get directly from an SDK, uh, in, in a future slide, but basically what originally was a short-term solution we actually found was a, a possible market that Pocket could get into where you don't have to uh, just interface directly with a tool. You can actually have a portal, a business. You can have something that's quickly iterating and adding new features uh, and Honestly, also holding your hand throughout the process because customer service is actually a big thing for developers. Um, and when they're accessing a blockchain, they really like to have that customer service or at least know that they have direct access to customer service. So I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but through the experiment of what originally was the Pocket Portal, it became evident that portals uh, or gateways, I should say, are actually going to be a central part of the network. And so today we're uh, making the central part of Shannon and it's now gonna become a first tier actor in uh, the Shannon upgrade. Uh, and then as an ecosystem, we learned what actual RPC markets want. And we pivoted from a purist SDK strategy to one that incorporates gateways. So through the pocket portal, we realized that the majority of the market wants UX that is akin to services with customer support instead of DIY, that's what we walked away with, uh, kind of the, uh, the portal experiment. That's the data that we walked away with. So why, why do gateways really matter? Why is it that the market wants this? Well, the problem is, is if you think about other protocols, there's a lot of other protocols out there all trying to do either decentralized data, oracles, 
uh, what have you. One of the biggest challenges is always the UX. The UX is almost a meme with how challenging it can be inside of Web3. Um, and so most criticism around Web3 utility tokens is their UX. When compared to centralized services, their Web3 alternative is dramatically worse in a number of key areas. The, it's very complex to onboard. Uh, you typically have to deal with some kind of token. Um, you have to deal with the blockchain. You have to understand how everything's kind of working in order to fully integrate their service. Uh, there's typically a lack of features. They're behind the centralized guys in terms of what you can do with it. Um, they're very slow. Uh, uh, there's slow feature development. If you're going to add something new, so they're already behind in features, but then if you're going to add something new, man, it just, it takes time because the whole protocol has to adjust in order to uh, make a new feature possible. And then uh, you have unpredictable quality of service. This is very true across a number of protocols that are actually live today. The QoS is very unpredictable. And Pocket has been able to kind of counter that because we haven't relied entirely on an SDK system. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But anything that is an SDK system, at least so far, the QoS has been very unpredictable. Um, and then there's always a varying cost because you're dealing with tokens. Uh, so the uh, you know the price of pocket can go up and down, right? And if we're basing everything and pegging everything in a you know fully decentralized way uh, to uh, strictly the pocket token, if the pocket token goes up, so does everyone's uh, cost for sending a relay. And the problem is, is most businesses do not uh, do their numbers uh, in terms of pocket. It's in something like USD. Right? Most businesses operate off of USD to calculate their costs, calculate their, their revenue. None of that's in pocket or in any other token. And so when you have a protocol that requires the token to be the center of it, and especially the center of the value of the service, that creates a whole lot of issues because what business wants to operate where their costs go up 10% on their RPC calls uh, one day because the uh, token price has adjusted, you know, has changed. So those are all huge problems that exist inside of the Web3 space uh, that the Web2 space doesn't have to deal with because obviously it's centralized. So to prevent Pocket from falling into the same cycle as these other projects, uh, Pocket is specifically designed to give the UX its own layer. And that is what we call gateways. So when you think of a service, it's a pretty simple stack most of the time. You've got your users, which are then interfacing with some kind of user interface system. Uh, this could be a GUI, this could be whatever. There's a layer, there's a system that they specifically interface with. Then that system is then connected to a backend system that then interfaces with the actual data uh, of what they're actually wanting. So this is just a very basic stack of what a service is. In the Web3 space, a lot of times it just operates without that UX system. Or there's one UX system, but it's very clunky. It's everything else that I'd listed before is the user experience that, that they have to deal with. So it's either a clunky UX system uh, or it's a limited UX system. But the UX in blockchains is the reason that blockchain hasn't been able to, and Web3 hasn't been able to compete with services on the centralized side. However, what Pocket provides is a solution for each part of the stack. So you have a UX system, which are gateways. They're the ones interfacing with users, providing all the user experiences that they need uh, in order to get access to the data that they need to access without all the overhead of doing it in a DIY fashion. Uh, and usually Pocket provides the, uh, the pro protocol itself, which operates as the backend systems, or, and then you have the data, which are the blockchain nodes. So no surprise there, that's how Pocket operates. So going to the next slide, instead of having one uh, system for the user interface, which can be very subjective, what features should be there, what which features shouldn't be there, what is a good experience 
for one developer might not be a good experience for another developer. Questions and challenges that, or any, any system that has a single U, UX has to worry about. But with Pocket, we're actually distributing this to where anyone can build on this UX layer. You have someone, you can have Grove, Nodis, Liquify, Raid Guild, Developer Dev. These are all gateways that have uh, that have already built on gateway or built on Pocket uh, or are committed to building on Pocket. Uh, some many of these have received uh, grant funds to build on Pocket. So Pocket is actively investing into having multiple ways that the UX layer is not one experience, but it actually is distributed to where you can pick your, your experience. You can go to someone like Grove. You could go to someone like uh, Raid Guild. They're actually doing online, or I should say on-chain uh, payments. And it's actually really cool, some of the things that they're building into their portal. So if someone wants to do on-chain payments, you could go entirely through Raid Guild. Um, I don't want to speak too early. They're, <laughs> they're still in development and everything. But uh, a lot of really cool things happening there. This is what Poc is, where this layer is populated by all sorts of different businesses, all sorts of different services, all sorts of different uh, user experiences. So every market, every niche group of developers could potentially find a place inside of one of the services that are inside of this UX layer. Go on to the next slide. So these, all these different uh, gateways that I listed, it's important to understand that these are businesses. So Pocket is actually creating a business layer inside of the UX layer. And so the purpose of these gateways are ultimately to connect users to the Pocket network. Uh, they can have similar UX experiences to the centralized services, uh, but they have an unstoppable and I should say backend, uh, which is the Pocket Network. Um, gateways themselves are real world businesses. This isn't something where uh, you should have to build inside of Pocket's gateway ecosystem as a charity. Uh, uh, Shannon itself and Pocket itself should be around enabling people to grow, build their own businesses, um, bring their own businesses into this UX layer uh, because they are incentivized to specialize in certain areas. So they can add new features. Some features that many features that already exist in today's gateways are you can have URL endpoints. Uh, you don't have to integrate an SDK into your code and uh, worry about any of that. You can have a URL uh, endpoint. Uh, you can have monitoring. An SDK doesn't give you monitoring because you still have to have some kind of server somewhere that's taking all this data, that's then able to make it accessible to you. Uh, it, it, monitoring is, is no uh, simple thing to just do with an SDK. It would be incredibly complex, unless there's a lot of cool tooling, but all of that can be built in time. Right now, you know, no matter what uh, other protocol you deal with, monitoring is always a real challenge, uh, especially when you're in a data industry like Pocket. Uh, simple payments. Uh, right now, if you go with Grove, uh, you can just pay for USD. You don't have to even interface with the token itself. You can just pay USD and then get access to Pocket. Uh, with what Raid Guild is building, uh, you can do that on chain, but you could do that uh, potentially through USD or some other stable coin on chain. But it's the same, it's a similar experience. You don't have to interface with the Pocket token if you don't want to. And then outside of adding new, uh, or, and then there's also uh, custom APIs, and I put an extra S here apparently just to show how how many more APIs you can uh, you can actually have here, <laughs> because the idea of custom APIs is there's going to be all sorts of niche markets. There's going to be ways that people are going to need new information, and if everything is reliant on the protocol to uh, to synthesize how data has to flow uh, to all users, it's going to be a very long process to to be able to compete on the level that uh, a lot of these other data services are competing on. So take Morales, uh, they're an RPC provider. They have a lot of APIs for tracking things like NFTs, 
uh, certain smart contracts, things like that. They went heavy into the custom API space, and many other larger providers are also leaning heavily into their own custom APIs. Uh, this is where literally the entire market right now is moving, and Pocket needs to be moving in that place as well. And any protocols that require any new APIs to be hard-coded uh, or, or something that kind of happens on a protocol level side, it's just going to be much slower. Um, the benefit of gateways is they can just add new features. They can add new uh, new APIs that then on their back end, they're able to utilize the Pocket Network to get all the proper data that they need, uh, but then they just repackage it in a way that provides users uh, with basically an abstraction layer uh, to not have to deal with all the raw data. And that's what gateways get to innovate on. So Pocket actually has the ability to have these uh, uh, people to innovate on how data is packaged and sent to users uh, through this gateway layer. Uh, they're also incentivized to reach niche markets, as I already mentioned, different developers that are developing different types of smart contracts or NFTs, uh, or even on different chains, there's going to be a lot of niche needs. And you can actually have gateways that pop up just to handle certain uh, use cases and abstract away a lot of the hard bits that like if someone was trying to do NFTs, you can abstract away a lot of that by just having a gateway that is well built for handling NFT data uh, and utilizes then the pocket network to not have to have a huge cost. And then they're also able to provide customer support, uh, customer service. That is a big one. That really is a big one. Uh, when I first started selling, because, uh, well, I started selling uh, Pocket Tokens directly to node runners uh, when Mainnet launched. And then after we had a healthy base of node runners, then the focus shifted to then selling to, uh, or not necessarily selling, but uh, starting to offer the Pocket Portal um, to users and trying to find users to uh, partner with and uh, start building a, a business around the uh, Pocket Portal. And customer support is just such a big one, which is one of the reasons why, it's one of the biggest reasons why developers will, instead of running their own node, which they could likely do cheaper in some cases, uh, they could uh, you know, maybe run a node cheaper than paying for someone like Infura or something like that. But because there's an entire team behind Infura, maintaining everything, and then providing them direct customer support, creating them with resources, materials, things of that nature, that is such a value add to 90% of projects out there. It, is, it can't be understated how important uh, customer service is to a lot of these developers and what they're looking for when they uh, uh, basically a service to provide them data because blockchain data can get very confusing very fast. There's a lot of variables in it. And it is nice to have a professional that is able to tell you what your problem is. And so that's just a huge part of uh, uh, what ultimately gateways will likely become and provide within the pocket network. And because the network itself is structured to incentivize gateways, to pay gateways and make them a, a, a tier one actor inside of the network, the idea is, is all these areas that incentivize businesses to grow, businesses can do with really cheap infrastructure through Pocket. If you think of this as um, if Pocket has an unlimited UX layer, then there is no limitations to where uh, Pocket can go. Fan makes gateways permissionless and part of the protocol itself, enabling Pocket to truly be the base layer of an unlimited number of user experiences. Is there any other protocol layer any other protocol that has a, uh, a protocol layer dedicated to UX. And that's kind of my uh, big point with, uh, with all of this, is this is where Pocket is truly different than every other data protocol out there. There isn't a layer that I've found inside of kind of the data space that uh, is focused on the area that, that Pocket is focused on. All right, next slide. Uh, just about done here, wanted to touch on a few things with uh, understanding then what gateways are going to be like in Shannon. So uh, in past presentations, I already talked about how uh, the, the differences between Morse and Shannon in a lot of different areas, including uh, some gateways. But uh, just to summarize, uh, gateways in Shannon operate entirely on-chain, 
are permissionless. This allows the pocket demand side to grow without today's legal uh, restrictions, because right now, if someone wants to become a gateway on Morse, you have to sign a contract PNF. There's all these things that you have to do because uh, Morse isn't truly built right now to enable trustless gateways because there's ways that gateways could game the system. So with Shannon, that's one of the North Stars of Shannon is we have to have a permissionless demand side so you don't have to go through PNF, you don't have to go through a legal uh, contract in order to get access to cheaper infrastructure. And gateways uh, in Shannon will have permissionless staking. Uh, they can have on-chain payments and then tooling for easily onboarding and QoS. And actually QoS was something that I failed to mention in the uh, a few slides up when I was talking about what gateways can provide, but QoS is a big one. Um, being able to identify why certain calls aren't working, under, understanding the ins and outs of certain nodes and certain networks and how to provide that data and the best ava availability possible um, to identify which nodes or you know, which nodes should be receiving what data from what users. That's a very big undertaking that has to be very chain specific and it, even at times user specific. And gateways can take all that, uh, it can take all that on and innovate in that space without requiring the whole network to make massive changes. Um, but tooling uh, is is going to be a, a something that's a big focus right now, which is why PNF's invested into Gateway Server, so that gateways can essentially connect to the pocket network in a super seamless fashion, be able to set up custom QoS and everything like that, all through essentially one package. And there's more tooling that is going to be a big focus on uh, uh, coming up with Shannon to then as we open this up to be permissionless, there will be a lot of tools that the gateway ecosystem and businesses can grab, utilize to easily connect to the pocket network and start being a gateway without much hassle. So that's what uh, gateways in Shannon, that's kind of the vision for them. Uh, and then kind of the, my final slide here is the gateways in Shannon and kind of the staking goals. So again, with, with thinking about gateways as businesses, and they need to be able to interface with the protocol, there's essentially two main goals that our staking system needs to uh, account for. And number one, minimum protocol interactions. Allow gateways to interface with Pocket itself the least amount of times, thus reducing friction. Uh, if they're having to constantly be reading the chain, following price movement, following maybe, you know, following the market of, of how much uh, relays cost at any given moment. All of that, the amount of times that they have to interface with Pocket, the protocol itself, uh, is gonna deter more businesses from utilizing Pocket. And so we wanna have minimal protocol interactions. This is where good tooling comes in. Um, this is where, uh, you know, just good support on a, on a network level. And this is what PNF has been focused on doing with uh, helping onboard gateways helping make it a, a, as simple a process as possible. All of that plays into uh, what is business viable for other companies, other businesses, entrepreneurs to come to Pocket and start building. Um, so minimal protocol interactions, and then number two, consistent cost in USD. This is a, just a huge one. Gateways are businesses, which means they need to have predictable costs. Uh, the cost per relay needs to be pegged to a USD value, while uh, even while the uh, price of pocket fluctuates. That's just a huge one. We can't have businesses being built on pocket uh, where they, their costs can go up 30% in one month, right? And granted, at times they can go down 30% in one month. But by and large, I would say 95% of businesses, uh, I would put that high of a price tag on this, that that amount of businesses just want consistent costs. Um, they don't want the fluctuating costs because, uh, yeah, they could maybe save a little money on some months, but really when it comes down to budgeting, it's the months that you uh, uh, get an unexpected amount of uh, increase from a token changing that can really crush a business and not make it sustainable in the long term. So uh, currently staking is a work in progress, uh, but these are kind of like North Star, 
what we want to accomplish so real businesses can build in the gateway ecosystem. This, all of this, I, you know, I know I kind of rushed through this, but uh, yeah, wanted to kind of open it up and open up a conversation, see if people have any questions about uh, kind of gateways on this conceptual level, on what gateways are, uh, how they fit, how, how it's different from other ecosystems and other protocols, and uh, uh, really open up people's minds on what gateways are so that we can see where the real market fits of Pocket can be inside of blockchain RPC, AI, all these other areas that uh, ultimately Pocket can go into any data area. So any of these areas understand where this gateway layer uh, plays into where Pocket can ultimately go. So there we go. Yeah, any uh, thoughts or questions? Yeah, so it sounds like um, so you're in this UX layer, the gateways, a lot of private companies operating, uh, but given the importance of UX to attracting new people into pocket and, and gaining, you know, widespread adoption, popularization, um, are we going to be sharing the developments in UX, or is the PNF going to be working on, you know, encouraging, you know, DAO initiatives to improve UX? In, in conjunction with the work of the private companies? I mean, how much is private, how much is, you know, DAO initiatives at that on the, the UX layer, the gateway layer? Yeah, so that's a, that's a great question. And actually, for just some context, uh, yeah, PNF, at least you could look historically at where their funding has gone. Uh, they invested heavily uh, in, in kind of building up this UX layer, meaning building up the, the gateway layer. So. Uh, you have Gateway Server, uh, which is making it easy for people to access uh, Pocket itself. You then have Raid Guild and Liquify, which are both building open source gateways that actually be our first fully open source gateway. Uh, actually, the, the first portal was mostly open source, but it, it was also an early version. So now you have Liquify and you have Raid Guild, I should say, building on what we've already learned inside of Pocket. <laughs> the, first, the first portal had to go through a lot of uh, challenges, but uh, uh, luckily Raid Guild and Liquify can actually build with a lot of that and that is learned from the ecosystem as a whole. Um, and so there'll be two, you know, at least two fully open source gateways that other people could literally fork and, you know, modify themselves to launch their own business to potentially, uh, you know, attract a certain niche or utilize their brand in a certain way to reach you know, new users uh, and monetize access to Pocket. And that's really what this UX layer is about. It's about monetizing access.